So the story that Emily tells is that she had a friend who needed an abortion, and her friend could not afford her abortion. So what Emily did was essentially pay for the abortion, but what she told her friend was that the money came from a fund to support women who needed help paying for abortions, which was, at the time, not the truth, right? Because it was just Emily who wrote the check. And so later on she decided she had to make that a truthful statement and uh, in her own way. I think Emily was very passionate, very persistent. She was just the heart of it uh, and the brains of it as well. She was that I can do it kind of person and she had a firm belief in that women's Having access to abortion is a is a right, a human right that shouldn't be denied. And she was the one that had the energy to not just say, "Oh, this is a problem," mm. you know, mm -hmm. and feel concerned but not do anything about it. She had the energy to move to the next step and take action, and she inspired the rest of us. Politically, we were at a place where I was worried about where we were headed uh, with the, the right to have a choice about what you do with your body. And um, it was, it felt really timely. It was like Emily came up with this thing and it was, yes. One big thing that uh, Women Have Options did was it helped women be able to recognize that it's okay to be able to make the choice. That was a big thing that we helped women with. Well, we started out uh, providing uh, transportation for people who were pregnant and couldn't afford to do anything about it, and giving them rides to Columbus. We sort of did it all ourselves. We set up a, a, a phone service through a a local place in Newark where people could call in and then a, a subgroup of us, and I was one of those people, um, worked with Julia Brody who sort of started it uh, to do the uh, sort of counseling uh, which, which involved checking for the phone messages if you were on duty on a particular week. The idea was to have it empower the women who made contact with us to make their own decisions about what they wanted to do. Unfortunately, I think there is a great need, uh, given the climate in this country right now and the kinds of legislation that is being passed in so many states, that I think that there's going to be a, a real need for the foreseeable future, and I'm happy that it's here. And it is discomforting to think that who is so alone, even in Ohio, where services and centers are falling by the wayside for reasons we all know. It was very interesting to, to be a part of the beginning of the organization. It was kind of exciting um, because we knew we were putting ourselves out there and we didn't know who was going to say, oh, you are what? You're doing that? And who would say, oh, good for you. You know, it, you put yourselves out there and what's going to come back is just don't know. We had a phone line and we got a couple of calls from people that sounded angry. Sometimes I think one of them was a woman and then we got a couple from men and they were angry and mad, didn't give their names, but told us that we were going to go to hell and we should stop doing what we're doing. That was not very pleasant. Gosh, I can't remember exactly what I said, but probably something like, um, you have the right to hold your own opinion, uh, and thank you for calling. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we were vulnerable women. I, I think that we were very committed, and we had each other. Uh, so we had a natural support system and we were never deterred by criticism or 
lack of funds or um, poor organization, whatever, we, we prevailed. Probably the thing I remember most was a young woman who came to my office with her daughter, her mother. Uh, and um, she was, I think, the, the young woman was 16 or 17. And, um, and the mother did most of the talking. Uh, and she, but she said, she came from east of Newark somewhere out toward the country, and she said, I've always been opposed to abortion. I didn't believe in it, I didn't think it should happen, and I'm embarrassed to say now that I understand better why that it's necessary to have that option. I don't want my daughter's life ruined. I want her to have all the opportunities that I've always wanted her to have. So we're here for that help. And back then, uh, often a, a person would call with absolutely no support at all, except just knowing about us. So that made the role of the person that was on the list of, of people that took calls uh, so important. Because we often were the only person that was able to say to her, it's okay, this happens to lots of people, we'll help you get through it. I remember one woman that called had several children and finances were a real pinch. And um, I do remember her because after it was all over, after she'd had the procedure, and maybe a month afterwards, she called us and, and just said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. you. You know, you've helped us so much. I don't think I could have gotten through this without you. And of course, those moments were so important to remember and keep clear to support us because we got criticism. You know. It's a crying need, and uh, especially in these times that are uh, a challenge for this particular need, we really need all the support we can get. Most, if not all of us, lived a part of our adult lives when uh, the right to abortion had not been established. Right. Uh, and had experienced that fear of being pregnant and not wanting to be and not having, not feeling like I had a choice. It was very dangerous if you got pregnant and didn't want anybody to know. And the last thing I want to see us do is go back to that yes. place. I was proud of what we were able to do here, but it was just a drop in the bucket. And if we could get a national organization doing that, I would be glad to help you. Well, people with money are going to always be able to have an abortion, just as they were before Roe v. Wade. Uh, but people without the means are going to be, in, in effect, cut off, which is what I think the legislation's intent is. So if I could wave a magic wand, I would have women have options, really think big. Um, recognize that for all practical purposes, money is going to be what makes a difference in whether women do have a real option. Uh, and that, at the very least, uh, to, to think strategically about becoming an abortion fund for all of the Midwest, uh, to make it possible for those women who are in rural places in Wisconsin or Michigan or Indiana, uh, wherever within that, this area, uh, to have access to funds. And I know that's not something that's going to happen maybe immediately, but it ought to be a vision uh, for this organization. We're, we, we're kind of the biggest thing around in this area. Uh, and it's a really valuable base that's been established. Um, but there's so much growth that could be could be put on it and it's going to be you guys that are going to do it.